Is it? Yeah, it'll be quiet when someone's sitting. Okay. You don't want to walk in Does somebody agree with that? Anyone else? Not talking on what? So what just happened? <laughs> what just happened? Did anyone see a problem with the interaction I was just having with you guys? What was it? I what? I'm I'm not I'm not supposed to text while I'm talking. So then tell me. Um, do you guys know someone or people who do that? Yes? How many of you are, uh, let's see, what's the word? Uh, how many of you actually do that as well? Or have done that as well? Everybody's like, <laughs> I am responsible for that as well. But you're right. Um, based on what, we're, what you guys have said, etiquette, so, um, a uh, set of rules. You see, even with me just playing pretending like I was texting, I don't even remember fully all the things that you guys have said. Okay? So, right there, you see a, a disconnect. But some of the things you guys talked about was remind me again? Dining room table, washing hands, golf, because there's a certain, you have to listen, you have to pay attention. What else? What were some of the other things? Eating during a presentation. Eating during a presentation? <laughs> exactly. Um, Digital etiquette, otherwise known as netiquette, since you can't see that because it's not working properly. But um, it's pretty much a set of rules, manners, um, on how to behave yourself uh, virtually, okay, within technology. And it's actually, again, a topic that there's so much to talk about. Now, technology is awesome because it allows us to connect with people, with organization, with things. It allows us to express ourselves in ways that we weren't able to before. However, a lot of times we forget that there is a direct connection uh, between what's happening in our world around us and how we interact with technology, okay? Sometimes we forget that it's not just us and that computer, but that computer and what we do on that computer and what we do on the phone and what we do in our email affects the other aspects of our life, okay? Um, we also forget that technology um, almost tempts us to do things that we're not brave enough to do outside, face-to-face, um, -face, right? So today we're just gonna be talking about some of these rules, and now, one of the things that you'll hear, um, and I'm a career services person, so I always have this in mind, but one of the top uh, soft skills, and these are skills that are characteristics, interpersonal skills, things that you don't learn in school. These are things um, that employers covet, okay, more so than the technical stuff. One of those top things is communication skills. When we, are, when we look at digital etiquette or netiquette, the same rules apply. The only problem is you've taken out the person. So now, attentively listening, clarify, uh, clarifying, uh, things like um, watching for tone and uh, facial and body language, facial expression and body language, are things that we miss when we're on the computer. So what I'm gonna do today, because of time, I'm gonna go through some of the basic uh, Medicare rules and um, some of just the basic ones that if you use these consistently throughout your, your social media networks or phone, email, you'll be able to create something that's more professional and something that represents you better. And again, involves the manners portion of this, uh, of using technology. So the first one, um, spell check, okay? Spell check, uh, we, all, we all have autocorrect on our cell phones, most of us. Um, that can be good or bad, right? So I'm sure we've all had experiences where we're texting and you meant to say a word and it autocorrects it to something else, which has the ability to completely change the meaning of that particular sentence, okay? 
You want to proofread everything that you're writing, every internet communication, um, message, email, um, profile, when you're putting together a profile and you're writing things, you want to proofread it. The reason for that is that um, errors, when you have errors in your writing, it diminishes your credibility. Okay? And when you're looking, when you're setting up a professional profile or a profile, or you're sending a message to a professor or to a colleague, your, your credibility is important. It is key to you as a person, right? So it diminishes. So when you're going through, oh, um, when you're going through a sending a message virtually, reread everything, proofread. No all caps. When you're writing in all caps, you're screaming! <laughs> right? So when I'm on Facebook and I have a friend and her baby, she's so cute. She has this fluffy cheeks and I love fluffy things. So, you know, under the comment, I'll be like, she's so fluffy! All in caps, right? Because it's just, I just want to squeeze her cheeks. However, if I'm sending an email to my boss or to a, a fellow friend, I'm not going to be like, why aren't you here yet? You missed our appointment! All in caps. It comes across as rude. And sometimes when we're using technology, we kind of forget some of these things. Like, for example, uh, sometimes, and I'm guilty of this, I use too many exclamation marks after something. It's like five. I think one suffices. You know, it shows, punctuation shows what you're trying to say. So remember, no all caps. That's just a basic etiquette rule. <laughs> Tell the truth. We kind of forget sometimes that um, how do I want to say this? Our personal uh, interactions online are not private. They're not. Outside of your personal email and maybe texting, anything you do on a networking site, it's public information. How many of you have ever Googled yourself? A couple of hands, about half of you. Those of you who haven't, go do it, please. I mean, it is unbelievable what you find when you Google yourself. Like, I clicked on images and I saw like three of my profile pictures and I was like, oh gosh. You know, like, you, you don't realize that this information is public information unless you go through the process of um, making your settings private, okay? But tell the truth. Once it's out there, it's out there. And so, um, you also can't control. The problem with this is that, let's say you tell a white lie. Um, let's say you say that you graduated with a 3.5 on your accomplishments, let's say, and you really graduated with a 2.9, um, you're not, you can't be responsible for what someone tags about you or writes about you. A lot of the things I found out about my, my name on Google were just people who had tagged me on a picture or who had written about me in something, which is not always a good uh, a good uh, writing. Some, someone may not write something good about you, so you want to make sure you're always telling the truth. And it's going to apply to something which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Be yourself. That is a huge netiquette uh, rule. Treat others the way you would treat them in real life. Like I said at the beginning, you're online, you have the ability to send something and do something without someone really knowing. You want to make sure that whatever you do online and virtually, you do as if you were to do it in person. So if you were to tell somebody to their face that you hate their haircut, you don't do that online because you're not face to face. You want to be yourself in everything um, that you do, especially online, because you don't have the ability to set the tone. Okay? When you say something to someone, if I'm talking to you, what's your name? Michael, if I'm talking to Michael, and I'm like, you know, Michael, I really appreciate your smile, but, you know, the way that you write, for example, um, it's not something I can really understand. Here, I can see him, I can kind of get a sense of how he responds to what I'm saying. I can kind of, by his body language, tell whether he was uncomfortable or not. If I send him that in an email message, hey, Michael, you know, I like your smile, but um, I'm not really sure about your writing. That can be taken so many different ways. It can come across rude. It, it takes away the emotion, the emotional ability, the emotion uh, behind that. Okay, so be yourself always. Um, do not flame. Have you guys heard of this term, terminology, flame, flame wars? Pretty much a flame is just an attack, personal attack on someone else. Um, and it's done through internet. And if you don't, if you haven't been part of it yourself or a victim of it yourself, 
you might have known or know someone who's been part of this. And this is just someone who does uh, sends an anonymous attack to you or to a friend, and then a flame war starts. They start going back and forth. And this is anything that's derogatory, rude, um, inappropriate, um, malicious threats. And I've, I've, I've seen those um, with people that I know where someone will send um, an anonymous threat, um, vulgar, rude, and it's just horrible. And then they engage in this back and forth. And it just escalates. And there's, there's not a lot of way to um, prove who did what and who said what because that's the problem. That's the disadvantage of technology. You can um, send things without someone knowing. Okay? So, again, you want to make sure that you don't engage in that, and that's good netiquette. Um, be clear and to the point. Less is more when it comes to messaging in a text, email, Facebook. Less is more. Be conservative in what you're writing. Remember, again, we don't have that face to face interaction, so you want to make sure that when you are uh, communicating with someone, either via text, phone, you be clear, clear and concise. Um, I'll give you an example. I received an email from a, a student I've been working with on resume help. And we met one time, and they sent me an email, and they keep using this one word, which is please. It's, a, it's, a polite, it's supposed to be a polite word, but the way that they're using it, when I first got the email, I almost, I assumed that it was in a rude way. Immediately. I got it and the first impression was, wow, he's almost demanding a little bit. He used, he used the word so much that it became demanding. You know, and I had to stop and kind of think back to who I know he is and the conversations we've had to then be able to say, okay, I, I think this is just the way that he communicates. That, I'm saying that to say, your text messages, emails, communication via uh, virtually are impressions. Leave impressions of who you are, okay? Yeah, leave impressions of who you are. So when you send a message, it leaves a lot of room for interpretation. So you want to make sure that when you're reading something or when you're sending something, you're thinking about that. Is it clear? Can I understand it? Can this, do I think the other person can understand it? And um, Am I putting in stuff that don't that doesn't matter? Okay, so clear and concise. Um, let's see here. Uh, use discretion. Okay, um, this is particularly having to do with what you're saying and who you're tagging. That's another etiquette. Always ask permission before you tag somebody. And that's not something we usually. Keep in mind, I've, I've been guilty of that. I'll just tag somebody if I was with them. But you want to ask permission, hey, can I tag you? Or what people do is, hey, tag yourself. You know, and that way you avoid the having to ask everyone individually. Um, but use discretion. Remember, when it's out, it's out. And I've seen people who will update statuses, um, put up a tweet. <laughs> about um, their lives that is just inappropriate, okay? Um, you want to make sure that you're using discretion and that you're thinking about um, what you're saying. Remember, how the same thing applies in real life. How do you want to be treated? How do you want someone to talk to you? What would you want someone to say about you? And that's the same thing you need to, you need to apply when you're looking at digital etiquette, okay? Avoid text language and emoticons. And this is particularly when you're, when you're looking at formal messages. You're texting, cool, but formal messaging, um, you want to avoid text language. One, you know, you're assuming that the other person knows what the acronym is. And then also, um, it could come across as immature and improper grammar and communication ability, right? And we're gonna see why that's important in a second, okay? So those are, again, some of the top eight basic um, etiquette, digital etiquette rules that you want to keep um, in, uh, incorporate them into everything that you're doing with technology. Apart from some of the things you guys mentioned, like talking, using your text while you're talking to somebody, answering a phone call um, when you're in a group, um, leaving your phone on loud when you're in a meeting, you want to put it on vibrate. These are things that are just basic manners and help you be responsible with technology. 
So that was kind of the basic, right? So now we're going to jump into um, another portion. And this portion is particularly focusing on your social media sites and the things that take place there and how that impacts you, even though right now you may not think that it does, okay? So we're going to do something to kind of get us a little bit uh, loose. And it might be a little silly, but I want us to kind of get uh, comfortable and break things up a little bit. <clears throat> so um, if you have a notebook in front of if you don't have a notebook in front of you, take, take one out. Or if you don't have a book, a piece of paper, anything would be good. <clears throat> Remember, I said it was going to be silly. It's just to loosen us up a little bit. So what I want you to do, I want you to take the book in front of you, and if you have a Facebook page, I want you to put the, the book in front of your face. If you have a Facebook page, look around. Is there anyone who doesn't have a Facebook page? <laughs> so everyone has a page. Okay, good. All right. If you have a LinkedIn page, I just want you to cross your arms. <coughs> LinkedIn page. Cross your arms so I can see. One, two. I see about less than half. All right. Okay. If you have a Twitter page, I want you to tweet, tweet. <laughs> Uh, those tweets suck, man, except for you right here. So about half of you, okay? What are some other social media sites that you guys use? Other forms of social media that you use? Networking sites? Google Plus? Mm -hmm. Tumblr. Tumblr? Reddit. I got a Tumblr, huh? WordPress. WordPress? WordPress? Reddit. Reddit? Instagram? Instagram. Anyone else? Huh? Pinterest, yep, that's a big one now. Okay, so these are other forms of social media, and what do you use them for? What are they used for typically? And what do you use them for personally? Sharing what? Pictures, what else? Professional, like keeping track of people, people from our local, but the same thing. Okay, so did you everybody hear him? Professional, keeping track of people that uh, do the same thing as him, but maybe are not local. Anyone else? Any other uses outside of just personal posting pictures? Discussing ideas. Discussing ideas. Planning events and personal calendars. Yep, planning events, personal calendars. Any other, any other uses that you use it for that we haven't talked about here? Spies on my sister. <laughs> I love that. She spies on her sister. That's a good one. I spy on my brother, too. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Any other? Okay. Awesome. So these are some of the basic uses um, for social media. So you have your personal use, which most of us have. If we have a Facebook page, we use it personally. Business. So if you have a business connecting with clients personally. Business networking, which is what? What's your name? That's just all your terms. <laughs> Brian. Brian. Which oh. Brian talk? Ryan. Ryan, thank you. Which Ryan talked about. Okay, so connecting with people who do the same thing he does but just are not here. Entertainment, right? And marketing. And we all we've all seen that. You know, it's like like us here, or you see all the ads on the on the right side or of, of the whatever site you're on. Um, now this is why how do these connect? Obviously, the rules that we talked about at the beginning. Uh, they all connect, right? Because this, you should be maintaining your social media sites just in the same way, right? When you're communicating, when you're posting, things of that nature. Um, however, there's something that goes beyond that, and that's the connection between what you're going to do after you graduate here, which is your career, and social media, okay? What's the connection between your employers and potential employers and social media? And I want to show you a quick little... Um, snippet of how some employers uh, are using them right now. Let's see. For a job, you actually hand over your Facebook password. More employers are asking you to do just that. And actually, Shapiro Chimatel is here with more on this controversial move. This is no way. Oh. Yeah, well, you might think that what you post on your personal Facebook page is your personal business. Some say it's like a 20th century diary or journal, something that's not relevant to work. But since Facebook profiles can be seen by others, a lot of employers say they're fair game. And it's a way to see how job applicants are reflected in the outside world. 
say, okay, why not? Let's look at these pictures. <laughs> All right. So how many of you kind of had heard about this thing, this trend that's going on nowadays? Just raise your hand high so I can see. A, a, good, a good number of you, so about half of you. Okay, how do you feel? How do you feel about employers viewing your information and looking you up on Facebook or LinkedIn or Googling your name? Yep. I think it's one thing if you keep it public, like if they can search for you on Google and find you, then really it's your fault if you don't want them to see. Sure. But if you have everything on private, say, and only certain people can see your stuff, then they don't really have business searching what they can't find, but it's not public. Okay. Exactly, they can search for whatever is available, but you can set Facebook so that even if someone else can plug in Facebook, they can't find you at all unless they're friends with you. What happens with like LinkedIn or Twitter or Pinterest or Instagram? But yeah. Um, I originally agree with you both what I said, but I think really the line is more of the private messages and stuff like that is definitely personal, and I would accept sharing that. But I think that anything that I post that is posted is depending on how you think about it, kind of very even if it's private. Okay. In a sense, it's like an informal reference for your life, so I can see why employers are interested. Because people can get fired for Facebook content. That's just sure. they're complaining about their job online. Sure. And, yeah, exactly. Sure. So, so then, how does that impact how the decisions you make virtually, or should it? It's a question. I mean, I think you should behave yourself on Facebook or anything like that, like you would in. Um, classroom or, or, I mean, <laughs> decently. Uh, but, but, but is that is decently the same for you than it is for me? You know, where does that stop? Yeah. I keep mine public. All my Facebook and everything is completely public. Just to remind myself that whatever I put on there, everybody's going to see. I want that to resemble my life exactly how it is. I don't want to be ashamed of sure. what it is. So when I'm on there, I'm not going to post something that's not, you know, that I may think. Do I want this person to see? I'm just mm. going to make sure because somehow it's on the internet. Sure. And somehow a hacker or whatnot can get through and get it right. somehow. I, I've never heard that perspective, but that's, I could see why that could be helpful to help keep you accountable. How do you, how would you deal with um, things that you can't control, like someone tagging you on something or, you know, adding you to a status? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess it comes into play, but at the same time, if I'm keeping my life on Facebook, the same life as I'm living now, it's not going to matter. Sure. Because everything that I'm tagged in is going to be something that I approve of. That you approve of. And, and that's a good perspective. Um, however, there's people where, where that's not the case. And so if you were in an interview and uh, an employer asked you for your password or to see if they could see your Facebook page, just they would look it up, how would you react? What would be our response? I've been friends with my past two employers on Facebook. Really? So. Okay. <laughs> You'd be okay with that? Not in any of them. The only trouble I have with alternate password, of course, you can change it, but it gives them access to alter the account without you being there. Of course, you can change the password sure. later, sure. but there is always that risk. That sure. So okay. I'm more comfortable with the idea of just logging on and showing them. Sure. That way, you have yourself there, and then you're showing yourself. So you can kind of manage what's happening. Does anybody here is is anybody here of the opinion that um, that your personal social networking involvement shouldn't be a factor for an employer? I think if you're a barista at Starbucks, yes, but I think if you work for the defense department, then no. no so it, why? It, it depends on the job. There are times where you need, if you're trying to become a federal judge, everything down to your yes. second grade you know, suspension is going to come into play. <laughs> gotcha. Whereas if you're working at Starbucks, not so much. Okay. Uh, how many of let me ask you this question. 
Um, how many um, of you think, well, let me ask this. Uh, do you think employers check social media sites? Yes. Yes. How many? And let me give you some percentages. Um, how many of you think that it's, and just great, ha, tall raise of hands, 40 to 60 percent? How many of you think it's 40 to 60 percent of, of employers? Huh? Versus what is Oh, sorry. I'll keep going. Um, 60 to 80 or 80 <coughs> to 100? So how many think it's 40 to 60? Hi. Two people. Okay. How many think it's uh, 60 to 80? Okay. So about 10, 12 of you. How many think it's uh, 80 to 100? About five, four and a half. Okay. Repler, if you've never heard of Repler, Repler.com, they actually represent you as a social uh, networking person. Um, and what they do is they help manage your image. So if they're, they go through your social media sites and if they, they see that something is you know, funky or inappropriate or something like that, then they give, you give them permission to kind of say, hey, you should clean this up, you should clean it up this way, etc. Anyway, they did a survey of over 300 employers in the United States, and they asked them these, this particular question. And uh, the number of employers within those, obviously, 300 companies, the, the percentage of employers that actually look at your Facebook page was 91%. <coughs> 91% of employers look at your social media sites, and the top three were Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. The next one right after that was Google. So 91%, that's, that's a huge amount of, of employers, okay? Next question. Um, they asked employers, have they ever rejected a candidate because of what they've seen on these sites? So again, um, these are the ranges, 20 to 40, 40 to 60%, 60% to 80. So how many think it's 20 to 40%? 20 to 40%. One. 40 to 60%. About four or five. How many think it's 60 to 80? Most of the rest of the room. 69% have rejected candidates like you because of what they've seen. And they won't tell you that. They just won't call you for an interview. And actually, interestingly enough, half of those employers that were surveyed are looking at your social media sites before they even call you for an interview. So this is happening. You submit an application, they're Googling your name. So again, you will never know. <laughs> you won't really know why that person didn't call you, but it could have been something that you posted, a picture that was up there, or not following a, an etiquette rule, right, or poor communication skills. And actually. Um, why do you think some of the reasons might be that employers reject 69% of candidates that they see on social media sites? What are some reasons? I think in the general, it's a new thing here that people can see that much into your personal life. Okay. So being that way, you see people as they really are, you know, you're able to, you know, judge people more, I guess. Okay. Yeah, that's a good. One thing that comes to mind is if somebody has an addiction to it, where they're spending an awful lot of time, it could sure. cost the company money if they go in. That's a great. That's not something I thought about, but yeah, that's a great uh, perspective. You're right, and I, actually, there's a lot of articles, and you can see uh, news clips of employers having that issue where they're like tracking employers' at, uh, internet activity without them knowing about it to see how much time and whether, how much time they're spending outside of work on social media sites and how it's impacting their work. Any other reasons? So thank you for that point. Any other reasons? Um, just something socially unacceptable. Okay. Posting racist comments or something like that. Right, derogatory <laughs> comments or pictures, right. The top three reasons based on the survey, so 69% have reject candidates based on what they see. The first one has to go with, a, not with one of the etiquette rules, which was um, they lied, candidates lied about qualifications. So remember I told you to tell the truth and be careful what you put out there? That is one of the, that was the, the main reason why they did it. So you'll say, you know, you have this experience on your resume and then they go to the, <laughs> so they Google you and they find out it doesn't match up with what you, what you gave, right? The next one was 
poor communication skills. Can you believe that? Out of all the other ones we mentioned, poor communications was the second highest. That goes back to text language, not proofreading, leading to uh, uh, grammar failures and punctuation mistakes. The last one was inappropriate pictures or comments about people or previous employers. And I, I'm, I've seen plenty of statuses about people at their job, at their staff meeting, they're like, oh, I hate this person, I go, you know. You have to be, mind again, be careful what you put out there, use discretion. Um, now, I'm gonna show you the, it's not a great picture, but this is the, the image uh, with the stats, right? Now, that's the, that's the side of things that says, you know what, you need to maintain a, a professional look, especially when you're moving from student to professional. And then also you need to keep your etiquette, visual etiquette up. But there is an advantage to your social media site. And if you see the last question, have you ever hired a candidate because of what you saw about them on a social networking site? 68% will hire someone because of what they see. So 69 are rejected because of what they see, but there's also a good number of them that will hire you based on what they see. And the, the highest percentage was um, because they, give, they gave a positive impression of their life, what they do, their pictures, uh, resent, uh, not resemble, but enhance the resume. You know, the other ones were, uh, I'm trying to remember what the other ones were because I can't clearly see it. Um, communication is one of them. Communi uh, proper communication skills. Um, able to oh, show the experience. So kind of looking, people who look at their social media sites as almost like a portfolio, things that they can put up there. So again, there are disadvantages to it if you're not keeping up with it, if you're not active with it, if you are not um, uh, keeping your digital etiquette or manners up on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or any of the other ones, but there are also some advantages to it. So the last little bit we're gonna talk about here are how to clean up. What are some of the things that you can do when you leave here, as you've been thinking about, and I hope you've been thinking about your own pages and what they have, and if not, I would suggest after this or on your phone, as we're going through this, go onto your Facebook page and look at some of the things that are going on. Um, remove any of your personal contact information. <laughs> if, for example, you have a public page, unless that's, again, these are preferences, so if you want to have yourself on an email on there, have it. However, um, you want to try to uh, avoid putting your personal contact information, as well as anything that shows gender, which is sometimes difficult in particular settings like Facebook, right? We have your birthday setting. But remember, an employer is not supposed to discriminate against you by age, race, gender. Then looking onto and all these other things, religious, um, affiliations, but when they're looking at they're looking at your pages, that's what they're seeing, right? They're seeing your age, your gender, what you look like, not only professionally but outside of work. So when an employer sees you and you're all dressed up, you have your three-piece suit on, you know your shoes are shined, your nails are clean, they see one side of you. But then they go on Facebook and you're like shirtless with some ripped jeans and your nails are painted black and your hair is all over the place. You're like, yeah, you know, you're chest bumping somebody else like that that is going to affect their perception of you. So again, you don't want someone to judge you based on those things. So as much as you can, uh, weed through the personal information. Remove photos that show you making new gestures or in inappropriate scenarios. And this even goes for um, individuals who don't engage in partying. You go to a, a social and you're drinking in a red cup. When you think of red cup, what do you think of? When you see a red cup, you think of what? Wine or alcohol. You think of alcohol, right? You see all the party pictures with red cups in their hands and everybody's like, Whoa! you know, it's like they're going crazy. You could be <laughs> you could be at a, I don't know, um, at your three-year-old niece's birthday party. But the setting kind of looks dark in the back, you know, you can't really tell distinguish what it is. You have a cup in your hand, and you're like, yeah, you know, you're just smiling. Even though um, there's nothing wrong with red cups. It's again, it's about the impression it's sending. So you wanna you wanna weed your Facebook pages or your Instagram, or your Tumblr's, uh, LinkedIn of uh, photos that can that could give the impression that something is happening. Because you don't have the chance 
to say, no, 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 I was at my three-year-old niece's birthday party. We were just, you know, drinking lemonade that she just, we were giving out, you know? So you have to make sure you're thinking about that perspective. Unfollow or unfriend people or groups that are not good, a good influence and or break Medicare rules. Once someone who you're connected to posts something on your wall, uh, you now you have options to be able to hide those stories and things like that. However, you can't always control it. So um, I have friends from, for example, from high school that grew up and have completely different values, and they'll post an appropriate picture. That's on my wall now, <laughs> you know, or like. This, the issues with spam now, where it's like somebody will click on a video, on a spam video, and then it's like it shows up that they were watching this really inappropriate video. They maybe didn't watch it, but again, it comes up that way. So you want to make sure you, you pay attention to that. <clears throat> These are some tips on how to transition your personal social networking sites to more professional sites or more professional sites, okay? Plan a social media strategy that is right for you and your career goals. And that goes back to kind of what Ryan was saying. Um, you want to think about the organizations that you want to work for. You want to research that. You want to work for Google. You want to research Google. You want to find out what's, what's Google's involvement in Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Who are they communicating with? Who are they connecting with? Okay, and then connecting, joining those groups, engaging in those conversations, all right? Uh, build an online professional profile. And that can be something you can do uh, on both Facebook or LinkedIn particularly. Partic LinkedIn is more professional based. But you want to, um, in your about section, instead of, I've seen some crazy about sections, but um, instead of putting personal things, put professional accomplishments. What have you done? What have you accomplished? What are you experienced in? Um, put little to no personal information, and then keep your info up to date. Okay, if you move to another job, keep it up. Okay, tell them, tell, stay in that, the transition you had. Um, and use privacy settings. You can, you can um, pretty much nowadays, set privacy settings for different aspects of your, socials, of your social sites. So if you don't, you wanna leave some of it public, you can also make some of it private. Um, use platforms like Twitter to expand your network. Again, actively participate in discussions with people that you want to connect with. There's, there's a recruiting uh, agent that you know, or you know you want to work for Lakeland. What's Lakeland doing on Twitter? What discussions are they having? And share what you know, share your ideas, share your knowledge. It, it happens a lot. People are being recruited off of these sites, okay? So pay attention to that. Join LinkedIn groups. Again, connect to the same thing. Research. It allows you to research. When you're going to an interview, you can use these opportunities to research about that particular company. But join them based on your industry uh, or your college, university related um, experience, okay? And the last thing is your to-do list. Um, this is things that you want to do. We talked about how to clean it up, and this is things you want to now fill in the, the things you cleaned up with. with. Making a clean professional life profile picture. That is the first thing that someone's gonna see when they look up your name, okay? That, the profile picture is on images in Google. So if they go onto Google and type in your name, it's gonna come up. So keep something professional. Including the images of appropriate travel, okay? Not your weekend in Vegas, you know, or, you know, on Miami Beach. Um, with pictures, more is better, not less. And by me, I mean that with clothing, okay? More clothing is better, <laughs> less clothing is not. Uh, post photos of you and your friends in a positive situation. You know, I don't know, petting animals or, I, I, you know, I don't know, having gatherings, you know, things like that, <laughs> positive situations. Um, join groups that, uh, and or people that are positive and are connected to your same interests and ideas. Um, don't just like everything, don't just join everything. Really look through what they're about and what they're gonna bring to your network. And, um, like them there. So again, remember that this affects all areas of your life, not just what you, not just that text you send, not just, not just that email. It affects everything, every aspect of your life. So the last thing, I, the last, if there's no questions, and if you have questions, you can ask it. Um, if there isn't, the last question I want to get from you or some a couple people is, what is one thing out of some of the things that you've heard? What is one thing that you 
you can go back, when you go through your social networking site, what's one thing that you can change or adjust? I might, I might go just my about me or whatever section on Facebook. Sure. Just because I, I, I don't really have much on there, I think. But mm -hmm. I don't really know what's on there. So. <laughs> it's a good place to start, yeah. especially when you don't know. Keeping uh, my LinkedIn up to date with my work and skills. That's a really good one, especially if you want to connect professionally with people. Anyone else? One thing that you can change? Or one rule you can implement? In what you you're doing that you have it okay and on that note I want you to keep this in mind and again remember that this is something that you you want to be consistent throughout your life so whatever you do in person do it virtually okay any questions or, or anything else you can talk to me after have a good afternoon guys Thank you.